Morning, y'all. Wake up. <laughs> I'm up today. <laughs> got some sleep. <laughs> God bless y'all. Hope y'all got some sleep tonight. Taking y'all time. I don't know what today is. Friday or something. Yeah, I think it is Friday. Yeah. All glory, honor, and praise go to my Father in heaven, the Lord Jesus, and the sweet Holy Spirit. Got to give glory, honor, and credit to who's too. You know? Yeah. Made it through another day. If y'all still here. Right. Life short, every day short. I was talking to uh, talking to this uh, older Chinese lady and this Spanish lady yesterday. They like they like sixty years old, both of them. They're real nice ladies. <laughs> it's crazy. And it's funny where you find yourself talking to people. At anyway, long story short, life short. You know, you gotta enjoy each day. Keep putting your faith and trust in the Lord. You know. Word. I know things are trouble all over the world. Lord stuff. But it's all good. Jesus said in this world you're gonna have a whole lot of trouble. Only in him you're gonna have peace. <laughs> but it's all good though. Y'all enjoy y'all so. Alright. <clears throat> I I aired, I see them kids on that T V uh that they got cancer and stuff. Uh, they got a smile on their face. They in they in serious pain. They got a smile on their face. Uh, Alright. I know that's all right. You can put the junk on yours, too. Psalms 23, uh, verse 1. Brother David said, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack none. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. I like that. Even though I walk through the darkest valley. I like what the King James said. He said, Yea, do I walk through the valley of shadow of death. I fear no evil, for you are with me. And your rod and your staff, they come from me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I dwell in the house of the Lord for forever. Amen. David said, "The Lord my shepherd, I lack none." When you keep your eyes, keep your eyes set on the Lord, man. It don't even compare. It don't even compare. To what's going on. It don't even compare. I promise you. The situation. I think Paul said somewhere. Our present sufferings. Don't even uh, compare with the future glory. That's going to be revealed. Yeah. I ain't going to get you carried away. Messing with y'all this morning. I'm up a little bit. <laughs> but God bless y'all. <laughs> I was tired as crap yesterday. I ain't going to front. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let me go ahead. Then I'm going to pick up where I left off. I wanted to do something else. But I'm, I, I guess I can do that too. Matter of fact, I can't do that. Y'all bear with me. It's early in the morning. <laughs> Whatever y'all doing. Y'all getting ready for work. <coughs> Enjoy y'all. So I know how it is. I like what, uh, I like what David said. I can read that. Right. Psalms 86, uh, Brother David said, Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I'm poor and needy. Guard my life, for I'm faithful to you, and save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiven and good, abounding in love to all who call on you. Hear my prayer, Lord, and listen to my uh, cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you. They will bring glory to your name, for you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. I like what he said. He said, teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. And give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I glorify, I glorify your name forever, for great is your love towards me, and you have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of the dead. Amen. Arrogant foes are attacking me, O oh God. Ruthless people are trying to kill me. They have no regard for you, but you, Lord, are compassionate and a gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me, and show your strength on behalf of your servant. Save me because I serve you, just as my mother did. Give me a sign of your goodness that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. I like that. So, I like that. I 
take care of the women. It's it's some I I I can't explain. I can't explain like I want to. I can't, but it's something about God's word, man. It protects your heart and your mind, Jesus Christ. Unlike nothing else. I have my mind like twenty different places right now. <laughs> so it come up. <laughs> God bless y'all. Y'all bear with me. It's early in the morning. So I'm, I think I'm gonna go here and then I'm gonna pick up where I left off, y'all. <clears throat> um, Alright, matter of fact, I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick up where I left off. So that I can feel myself in care of Alright, God bless y'all. <laughs> where did I leave off? In Nehemiah chapter 10. Get these little names out the way, uh, y'all, and then real quick. So y'all bear with me. Nehemiah chapter 10. Uh you just tuned in, you wanna pick up yesterday where I left off. Uh, See where I'm at. Um, all right. I'm gonna knock these joints out a little bit. Nehemiah chapter 10. Uh, well, uh, it's like a verse before that. The agreement of the people uh, say, In view of all this, we are making a binding agreement, putting it in writing, and our leaders, our Levites, and our priests are aff affixing their seals to it. Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 1 say, Those who sealed it were Nehemiah the governor, the son of Hilkaliah, Zedekiah, Sariah, Azariah, Jeremiah, Pashur, uh, Amar, Malkijah, Hattush, Shabaniah, Maluk, Haram, Miramoth, Obadiah, Daniel, Jinnathan, Baruch, Meshalam, Abadaj, uh, Abijah, uh, Majamin, Maziah, uh, Maziah, Bilgai, and Shemaiah, these were the priests, the Levites, Joshua, uh, oh man, matter of fact, I'm tripping, <laughs> I read this, <laughs> uh, Nehemiah chapter 11, <laughs> don't laugh at me yet. <laughs> Yeah, I told you I'm up a little bit. Nehemiah chapter 11. Y'all forgive me. <laughs> Bear with me. Nehemiah chapter 11. Yeah. God, when you got your Bibles with me, say amen. <laughs> yeah, that just happened. Nehemiah chapter 11, verse 1. New residents of Jerusalem. I did read that yesterday. <laughs> Nehemiah chapter 11, verse 1. Uh, the new residents of Jerusalem. Yeah, I remember they said we will not neglect that. We will not neglect the house of our God. That was the last thing I read. The new residents of Jerusalem, Nehemiah chapter eleven, verse one. <laughs> it's Friday. Y'all ain't doing it anyway. <laughs> Rock with me. <clears throat> Say now the leaders of the people settled in Jerusalem. The rest of the people cast lots to bring one out of every ten. Ten of them to live in Jerusalem, the holy city. While the remaining nine were to stay in their own towns, the people commended all who volunteered to live in Jerusalem. I like that. The people commended all who volunteered to live in Jerusalem. These are the providential leaders who settled in Jerusalem. Now some Israelite priests, Levites, temple servants, and descendants of Solomon's servants lived in the towns of Judah, each on their own, each on their own property in the various towns, while others, while other people from both Judah and Benjamin lived in Jerusalem. From the descendants of Judah, Atiah, uh, At Atahiah, the son of Uzziah, the son of Zechariah, the son of Amariah, the son of Shephatiah, the son of Mahalil, a descendant of Perez, and Messiah, uh, Messiah, Messiah, son of Baruch. Barash, whatever his name is, Barush, uh, the son of Kohose, <coughs> Kohaze, the son of Halziah, the son of Adiah, the son of Jared, uh, the son of Zechariah, a descendant of uh, Shelah. <coughs> the descendants of Perez who led in Jerusalem total 468 men of standing. From the descendants of Benjamin, Salu, son of uh, Mashalion, the son of Joed, the son of Padea, the son of Koliah, the son of Masiah, the son of Ithiel, Ithiel, 
the son of Jashiah and his followers, Gaba and Salah, uh, 928 uh, men. Joel, son of Zikri, was their chief officer. And Judah, son of Hasinua, was over the new quarters of the city. From the priests, Jedeiah, uh, Jediah, the son of Jehoreth, Jekin, Syriah, son of Hilkiah, the son of Mashulion, the son of Zadak, the son of Marioth, the son of Ahitu, uh, the official in charge of the house of God and their associates, who carried on the work of the, uh, for the temple. 822 men. Adi, uh, Adiah, son of Jer Jeroham, Jeroham, the son of Peliah, uh, uh, the son of Am Amzi, the son of Zechariah, the son of Peshur, the son of Mal uh, Kutcher, and his associates, who were heads of the families, 242 men, uh, Amasa, Amas Amasa, son of Azrael, uh, Azrael, the son of Ahazah, the son of Mashilelmeth, the son of Emmer, and his associates, who were men, who were men of standing, 128, there are the chief official officer was Zab uh, Zabdiel, son of Hag the son of Hag Dolem. From the Levites, Shemaiah, <coughs> y'all bear with me. From the Levites, Shemaiah, I'm gonna feel weird if I skip over, but y'all got time. We ain't doing. We gonna get them. From the Levites, uh, Shemaiah, son of Hashur, uh, Hashura, the son of Azrakim, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Bun. Uh, Shabbatai and Josabed, two of the heads of the Levites who had charge of the house outside work of the house of God. Mataniah, son of Mika, the son of Zab, uh, Zabdi, the son of Asaph, the director uh, who led in thanksgiving and prayer. Uh, Bat Bukaya, the second among his associates, and Abba, the son of Shammah, the son of Galil, the son of Jeduthun. The Levites in the holy city totaled 284. The gatekeepers, <clears throat> Akul, Talmon, and their associates who kept the watch at the gates, 172 men. The rest of the Levites with the priests and Levites were all in the towns of Judah, each on their, each on their ancestral property. The temple servants lived on the hill of Ophu and Zaha and Gishfun were in charge of them. The chief officer of the Levites in Jerusalem was Yusi, son of Bani, the son of Hashabiah, the son of Mataniah, the son of Mekin. Yusi was one of Asaph's descendants who were, the, who were the musicians responsible for the service of the house of God. The musicians, <coughs> the musicians were under the king's orders, which regarded their daily activity. Patahiah, son of Mish, uh, Mishazabel, one of the descendants of Zara, son of Judah, was the king's agent, and, and all affairs relating to all people. As for the villages with their fields, some of the people of Judah lived in Kiriath, uh, Kiriath, Kiriath, Kiriath Arba, and its surrounding settlements, and Dibon, and, and its settlements, uh, and, and its settlements, and Jika, Jikabazil, uh, Jakabzil, and his villages, and Jishu, and Molada, and Beth Palat, and Hazar Shur, and Bersheba, and his settlements, and Ziklag, and Mikolna, and his settlements, and Enraman, and Zor, and Jarmuth, and Zanoa, Adulam, and their villages, and Lakish, and his fields, and Azika, and Azika. Azika in his settlements, so they were living in, so they were living all the way from Bashib to the valley of Hinnom. Yeah, these people are all over. Word. <clears throat> uh, the descendants of Benjamins uh, the descendants of the Benjamites from Jeba lived in Michmash, Ija, Bethel, and his settlements in Antioch, uh Nob and Anaya and Anna. And and I, uh, and Hazor, Ram, and Jeta, uh, Jetum, and Hadid, Zeboam, and Nabal, uh, and Lot, Ono, and G Harshim. Some of the divisions of the Levites settled in Benjamin. Uh, Nehemiah chapter twelve. Uh, the priests and the Levites. Um, yeah, bear with me. All right. These were the priests and the Levites who returned to Zerubbabel, son of Shittil, with Josh and with Joshua. 
Sariah, Jeremiah, Ezra, Ez Amara, Maluk, Hattush, Shekaniah, Reham, Mary Moth, Edu, Jenathan, <coughs> Abijah, Majamin, Mayo Dijah, uh, Mo Ad Mo Adijan, Mo Adijan, Bilga, uh, Bilga, Shemaya, Jerob, Gdiya, Salu, Amok, Hilkiah, and Gdiya. These were the leaders in the, of the priests and their associates in the days of Joshua. The Levites were Jushia, Benu, uh, Kadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, and also Mataniah, who together with his assist associates were in charge of the songs of thanksgiving. Back Bukiah and Uni and their associates stood opposite them in the services. Joshua was the father of Jehoiakim, Joachim, Joachim. Rolling with that. Joachim, the father of Elishib, uh, uh, Elishib, the father of Geo, Geo, uh, Joadan, Joadan, the father of Jonathan, and Jonathan, the father of Jadua. In the days of jo uh, Joachim, these were the heads of the priestly families of uh, uh, Siriah's family, Moriah, of Jeremiah's, Hananiah, of Ezra's, Meshuliam, of Amiris, of Amiris, uh, Jehohanan, of Milok's, Jonathan, of Milok's, Jonathan, of Shikaniah's, Joseph, of, of Haram's, Adna, of Mary, Mary Moss, Hilkai, of Edus, Zechariah, of Jenathan's, Mushalam, of Abijah, Zikri, of Men, uh, Menanim, Men, Mena, Menamins, and Maodis, Mo, Mo Adiz, uh, Piltat, of Bilgai, Shemur, <coughs> Shemur, of Shemayas, uh, Jehonathan, of Jearibs, Matanah, of Jediah's, Yisra, of Salus, Kala, of Amox, Eber, of Hilkiah's, Hashabiah, of Zediah, Nathaniel. The family heads of the Levites in the days of Ish, Elisha, Elisha, uh, uh, Geoada, Jonathan, Johan, Johan, Johanan, and Jew, uh, Jad, Jadua. As well as those of the priests were ordered or uh, were recorded in the region of Darius the Persian, the family heads among the descendants of Levi up to that time, up to the time of jo Johan Johanan, son of Eli Eliashib, uh, were recorded in the book of Annas. And the leaders of the Levites were Hashubiah, Jerish, uh, Jerubiah, Yeshua, son of Cadmiel, and their associates who stood opposite uh, them to give praise and thanksgiving. One section responded to the other, as prescribed by David, the man of God, Mataniah, Bu, Bak, uh, Bak Bukiah, Obadiah, Mishulam, Talmon, and Akub were gatekeepers who guarded the storerooms at the gates. They served in the days of Geo, uh, Joiakim, son of Joshua, the son of Josedek. And in the days of Nehemiah, the governor, and of Ezra, the priest, the teacher of the law, dedication of the wall of Jerusalem. <clears throat> At the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, the Levites were sought out from where they, where they had lived and were brought to Jerusalem to celebrate joyfully the dedication with songs and to, of thanksgiving and with the music assembles, harps and lyres. The musicians also were brought together from the region around Jerusalem, from the villages of the Nitoph, uh, the Thalites, uh, from Beth Gilgal, and from the area of Jibbon, and Asmavath, for the musicians had built villages for themselves around Jerusalem. When the priests and Levites had purified themselves ceremonially, they purified the people, the gates, and the walls. Hmm. I like that. I had, the, I had the leaders of Judah go up on top of the wall, also assigned two large cores to give thanks. One was to proceed on top of the wall to the right toward the Dung Gate, Hoshia, and half of the leaders of Judah followed them, along with Azariah, Ezra, Meshuliam, Judah, Benjamin, Shemaiah, Jeremiah, as well as some priests with trumpets, and also Zechariah, son of J Jonathan the son of Shemaiah, the son of Mataniah, the son of Ma uh, Micaiah, Micaiah, 
Mikaiah, Mikaiah, the son of Zach, Zakur, the son of Asaph, and his associates. Shemaiah, Azarel, Malale, Malale, Galilee, uh, Ma, uh, Nathaniel, Judah, Hanani, with musical instruments prescribed by David, the man of God. Ezra, the teacher of the law, led the procession. At the fountain gate, they continued directly up the steps of the city of David. They, <clears throat> at the fountain gate, they continued directly up the steps of the city of David on the on to the accent uh, to the wall and pass above the site of David's palace to the water gate on the east. The second corps proceeded in the opposite direction. I followed them on top of the wall together with half of the people past the tower of the ovens uh, to the bro to the broad to the broad to the broad uh, wall to the broad wall uh, over the gate of Ephraim and Jishu Jish uh, uh the Jish the the Jishai the Jish the Jishana gate the fish gate the tower of Hanel and the tower of hundred as far as the she gate and the gate of the guard uh, they stopped. The two cores they gave thanks then took their places in the house of God. So I did. The two cores that gave thanks then took their places in the house of God. So did I, together with the, uh, together with half the officials, as well as the priests, Eli Kim, Masiah, Mena, 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 Elo, Na, Zechariah, and Hananiah. Hananiah with their trumpets, and also Masiah, Shemaiah, Eliezer, uh, Eliezer Yitzi, Jehohanan, Mil, uh, Malkajan, Elam, and Ez and Ezer. The chorus sang under the direction of Zerahiah, uh, Jazrahiah, uh, Jazrahiah, Jazrahiah. And on that day they offered great sacrifices, rejoicing because God had given them great joy. Amen. The women and children also rejoiced. The sound of rejoicing in Jerusalem could be heard far away. <laughs> At that time, men were appointed to be in charge of the storerooms for the contributions, the first fruits and tithes uh, for the fields. From the fields around the town, they were to bring into the storerooms the portions required by the law for the priests and the Levites. For Judah was pleased with their minister, uh, with the ministering priests and Levites. They performed the service of their God and the service of purification purification as did the musicians and gatekeepers according to the commands of David and his son Solomon for long ago in the days of David and Asaph there had been directors for the musicians and for the songs of praise and thanksgiving to God so in the days of Zip, so in the days of Zerubbabel and of Nehemiah all Israel uh, contributed the daily portions for the musicians and the gatekeepers they also set aside the portion for the other Levites and the Levites set aside the portion for the, for the descendants of Aaron. Nehemiah 13. <clears throat> Nehemiah's final reform. Nehemiah 13. Uh, on that day, the book of Moses was read aloud in the hearing of the people. And there, uh, and there was found written... <laughs> That no Ammonite or more or Moabite should ever be admitted to the assembly of God, because they had no because they had not met the Israelites with food and water, but had hired Balaam to call to call a curse down on them. Our God, however, turned the curse into a blessing. Amen. Uh, when the people heard when the people heard this law, they excluded uh, from Israel all who were of foreign descent. Uh, before this, Elisha, the priest, had been put in charge of the storerooms of the house of God. He was closely associated with Tobiah, and he had provided him with a large room uh, formerly used to store the grain offering and incense and temple articles. Also with the tithes of grain, new wine, and olive oil prescribed for the Levites, the musicians, and the gatekeepers, as well as the contribu uh, contributions for the priests. But while all, but while all this was going on, I was not in Jerusalem for the thirty second year of Artaxerxes, king of Babylon. I had not returned to the king. Some time later, I asked him permission and came back to Jerusalem. Here, I learned about the evil things Ishlai Elisha had 
had done in providing Tobiah a room in the courts of the uh, house of God, I was greatly displeased and threw all Tobiah's household goods out of the room. I gave orders to purify the rooms, and then I put them into, and then I put back, and then I put back into them the equipment of the house of God with the grain offering and the incense. I also learned that the porch, that the portions assigned to the Levites had not been given to them, and that half of the Levites and musicians responsible for the service had gone back to their own fields. Hmm. So I rebuked the officials and asked them, "Why is the house of God neglected?" Then I called them. Then I called them together and stationed them at their posts. All Judah brought the tithes of grain, new wine, olive oil to the storerooms. I put Shilamiah, the priest, Zadok, the scribe, and the Levite named Padiah in charge of the storerooms and made Hanan, the son of Zakur, the son of Mataniah, their assistant because they were considerable, because they were considered trustworthy. They were made responsible for distributing the supplies to their fellow Levites. Remember me for this, uh, my God, and do not blot my name out of what I have. Uh, remember me for this, my God, and do not blot out what I have, what I have so faithfully done for the house of my God and his services. In those days, I saw, in those days, I saw people in Judah uh, treading wine press on the Sabbath and bringing in grain and loading it on donkeys together with wine, grapes, figs, and all other kinds of loaves. And they were bringing into Jerusalem on the Sabbath. Therefore, I weren't. Uh, therefore, I warned them against selling food on that day. Uh, people from Tyre who lived in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, were bringing in fish, all kinds of merchandise, and selling them in Jerusalem on the Sabbath to the people of Judah. I rebuked the nobles of Judah and said to them, "This is a, this is wicked. This is what what is this wicked thing you are doing? Desecrating the Sabbath." Didn't your ancestors do the same so that our God brought all this calamity on us and on this city? Now you are staring up more wrath against Israel by the desecrating Sabbath. When when evening shadow fell on the gates of Jerusalem before the Sabbath, I ordered the doors to be shut and not open until the Sabbath was over. Was over. I stationed some of my own men at the gate so that no lo no load could be brought in on the Sabbath day. Once or twice, the merchants and uh, sellers of all kinds of goods spent the night outside Jerusalem. But I warned them and said, why do you spend the night by the wall? <laughs> if you do this again, I'll arrest you. From that day on, they no longer came on the Sabbath. Then I commanded the Levites to purify themselves and to go, to, and go guard the, the gates in order to keep the Sabbath day holy. I like this, the The Lord, in, in one of the commandments, say, it says, remember the Sabbath. <laughs> On the Sabbath, and he was trying to do that. Now, I know somebody gonna say, "Well, we don't, we don't gotta keep the Sabbath or something no more, bro." <laughs> the Sabbath in the old days was a Saturday, you know, the seventh day of the week. People think. Uh, um, Sunday, 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 the first day of the week. People think that's like the seventh day or something. That's the first day of the week. I got to wake up. Um, but anyway, Saturday, the seventh day of the week. And uh, that was the day the Lord told the people don't do nothing. And I was having, I was having a discussion with this dude one day. I was in the same boat he was in because I was trying to observe the Sabbath myself one day. And uh, the Lord will bless you. If you uh, to, to one person, if they're trying to keep the Sabbath, like if they're doing it, they're they trying to honor God. And uh, to another person, every day is a Sabbath because when Jesus came, uh, he lord of the Sabbath. Uh, the Sabbath was made, uh, Sabbath wasn't made for man, man for the Sabbath, or something like that. Uh, anyway, every day, every day. It's like a Sabbath with the Lord. It's the Sabbath rest for the people. Like where it says, make sure you're into a Sabbath rest. Every day is considered like a Sabbath with the Lord. But particularly, it's Saturday. All right. And, um, but anyway, 
Romans 14, uh, verse 1, says, Except the one whose faith is weak, uh, without quarreling over disputable matters. One person's faith allows him to eat anything, but another whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The one who eats in everything must not treat with contempt the one who does not, and the one who does not eat everything must not judge the one who does, for God has accepted them. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To their own master, serve and stand or fall, and they will stand, for, God, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Amen. This is right here. One person considers one day more sacred than another. Another considers every day alike. <laughs> Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Whoever, whoever regards one day as special does so to the Lord. Whoever eats meat does so to the Lord, for they give thanks to God. And whoever abstains does so to the Lord and give thanks to God. For none of us lives for, our, for ourselves alone, and none of us dies for ourselves alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother or sister, or why do you treat them with contempt? For we will stand, for we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. So then, each of us will give an account to our, of ourselves to God. Therefore, let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your mind not to put any stumbling block or obstacle in the way of a brother or sister. I am convinced, uh, being persuaded in the Lord Jesus, that nothing is unclean in itself. But if anyone regards something as unclean, then for that person it is unclean. If your brother or sister is distressed because of what you eat, you are no longer acting in love. Do not, uh, by your eating, destroy someone for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let what you know is good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because anyone who serves God, and anyone who serves Christ in this way, is pleasing to God and receives hum human approval. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and the mutual edification. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All food is clean, but. But it is wrong for a person to eat anything that causes someone else to stumble. It is better for it is better not to eat uh, meat or drink wine, to do anything else that will cause your brother or sister to fall. So whatever you believe about these, uh, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. I like that. Blessed is the one who does not condemn himself by what he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if they eat because their eating is not from faith. And everything that does not come from faith is sin. Amen. The whole point I opened this up and read that was by speaking about the Sabbath. One person considers one day more sacred than another and another every day of life. Each of them should be fully convinced in their own mind. Now, every day considered alike like the Sabbath when you know Jesus. And Jesus ain't in the picture with these people yet, so they had God's word, and Nehemiah was rolling off of God's word. They was, right, all they had was the Old Testament to look forward to, but everything points to the new. But Nehemiah was trying to be obedient to, to the Lord by that, by uh, keeping the Sabbath. And the Sabbath told him, don't do nothing. <laughs> I, I bet you can't sit down on Saturday if you want to. <laughs> word, sit down and try to relax. And <laughs> Only with the Lord you got rest. Word. Uh, the people, you see them, what they was doing, it said, uh, in those days I saw, <laughs> it says, uh, Nehemiah 13, verse 15, in those days I saw people in Judah threading wine presses on the Sabbath and bringing in grain, loading on the donkeys, together with wine, grapes and figs, all kind of loads, and they were bringing it in, and they were bringing all this into Jerusalem on the Sabbath. Therefore, I warned them against selling food on that day. For people from Tyre who lived in Jerusalem were bringing in fish and all kinds of merchandise and selling it, selling them in Jerusalem on the Sabbath to the people of Judah. I rebuked the nobles of Judah and said to them, What is this wicked thing you are doing, desecrating the Sabbath? Didn't your ancestors do the same thing so that our God, so that our God brought all this calamity on us and on this city? Now you are staring up more wrath against Israel by desecrating the Sabbath. When evening shadows fell on the gates of Jerusalem before the Sabbath, I ordered the, the I ordered the doors to be shut and not to be open until the Sabbath was over. I stationed some of my own men at the gate so that no load could be brought in on the Sabbath day. Once or twice, the merchants and sellers of all kinds of goods spent the night outside Jerusalem. But I warned them and said, "Why do you spend the night by the wall? If you do this again, I'll arrest you." 
From that time on, they no longer came on the Sabbath. Then I commanded the Levites to purify themselves and go and guard the gates in order to keep the Sabbath day holy. R remember me uh, for this also, my God, and show mercy to me according to your great love. Moreover, in those days, I saw a man of Judah who had married women from Ashdod, Ammon, and Moab. Half of their children spoke the language of Ashdod or the language of one of the other peoples and did not know how to speak the language of Judah. I rebuked them and called curses down on them. I beat some of the men and pulled, and pulled out their hair. I made them take an oath in God's name and said, you are not to give your daughters in marriage to their sons. You are not to take their daughters in marriage for your sons or for yourselves. Was it, was it not because of marriage like this that Solomon, king of Israel, sinned? Among, among the many nations, there was no king like him. He was loved by his God, and God made him king over all of Israel. But even he was led into sin by foreign women. Must we, must we hear now that you too are doing all this terrible wickedness and are being unfaithful to our God by marrying foreign women? One of the sons of Joiada, son of Elisha, the high priest, was son-in-law to Sam Balak, the Horonite. I drove him away. I drove him away from me. Rem remember them, my God, because they defiled the priestly office and the covenant of the priesthood and of the Levites. So I purified the priests and the Levites of everything foreign and assigned them duties and assigned them duties each to his own work. Also made provisions for contributions of wood and that de and at designated times uh, for and for the first fruits. Remember me with favor, my God. It's the end of Nehemiah. Pick up an S. Got a question. I like that. Esther, chapter one. Queen Vash, Queen Vash, Vashti, Queen Vashti deposit. <laughs> Queen Vashti deposit, uh, deposed. I said deposit. That's putting money into a bank, ain't it? It's still early in the morning, yeah. I've been listening to myself, man. When I do, when I go back and do the jokes all over again, I got, I got some jokes for y'all. I ain't a joker person, or whatever. But I ain't talking about ha ha fun. I'm just talking about like my comments. I'm gonna go back and do a comment junk, like where I be reading. I, I just be focused on reading sometimes. Like I be listening to myself, I be like, <laughs> it was so much stuff. I don't want to get carried away. But I got y'all, though. If you keep tuning in, rock with me. All right, God gonna bless y'all. Right. Queen Vash Vashti deposed. <laughs> I said deposit. I don't know where the I come from. Anyway, <laughs> Queen Vashti deposed. <laughs> this is what happened. <laughs> this is what happened during the time of Xerxes. Uh, the Xerxes who ruled over 127 provinces, provinces stretching from India to Kush. All that time, King Xerxes reigned from his royal throne in the Chattadil of Susa. And in the third year of his reign, he gave a banquet for all, his, for all his nobles and officials, the military leaders of Persia and Medea, the princes, and the nobles of the providence were present. For a full 180 days, he displayed the vast wealth of his kingdom and the splendor and glory of his majesty. Of his majesty. When the days were over, the king gave a banquet, lasting seven days, in the enclosed uh, garden of the king's palace for all the people from the least uh, to the greatest were in the Chetadel of uh, Susa. The garden had hangings of white and blue line and fastened with cords of white line and purple materials to, uh, to silver rings on marble pillars. They were, there were crouches of gold and silver on the most, most mosaic uh, on a mosaic uh, pavement of uh, porf porphyry, marble, mother of pearl, and other costly stones. Wine was served in goblets of gold, each one different from the other, and the royal wine was abundant. In keeping with the king's uh, liberal, liberal liberality, liberally, liberality. 
in keeping with the king's liberality. I, I, it's throwing me off. I know the word, but it's throwing me off. It's not happening to me right now. Yes, it is. Anyway, in keeping with the king's liberal, lib, liberality, 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 man. And keeping with the king's liberality. By the king's command, don't laugh at me. By the king's command, each guest was allowed to drink with no restrictions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for the king's, for the king instructed all the wine stores to serve each man what he wished. Queen Vashti, uh, Vashti also gave a banquet for the women in the royal palace of King Xerxes. On the seventh day, when King Xerxes was in high spirits from wine, he feeling good, he commanded the seven Enochs who served him. Mahuman, Bista, Harbona, Bigta, Agbatha, uh, Abagtha, Dethar, and Carcass, uh, Carcass, to bring him Queen Vashti wearing her royal crown in order to display her beauty to the peoples and nobles, for she was lovely to look at. This dude, wow. He went and got just to bring in just to look at him. Anyway, but, but, when, it, but when the attendants uh, delivered the king's command, Queen Vashti refused to come. Mm. Then, the, then the king became furious and burned with anger. Since it was customary for the king to consult experts in matters of law and justice, he spoke with the wise men who understood the times and were closest to the king. Karshida, Shethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Maurice, Marsh, uh, Marcina, uh, and Mimukan, the seven nobles of Persia and Medea, who had special access, access to the king and were highest, highest in the kingdom. According to the law, what must be done to Queen Vashti? Uh, according to the law, what must be done to Queen Vashti? He asked. She is not. She has not obeyed the king. She has not uh, obeyed the command of King Xerxes that the Edenites have taken to her. Then uh, Mim, uh, Mimukan replied in the, in the presence of the king and the nobles, Queen Vashti has done wrong, not only against the king, but also against all the nobles and, and the peoples of, the, of all the providence of King Xerxes. For the queen's conduct will be for the queen's conduct will become known to all the women, and so they will despise their husbands and say, King Xerxes commanded Queen Vashti to be brought before him, but she would not come. This very day, the Persian and Medinian women of the nobility who have heard about the queen's conduct will, re will, respond, will respond to all the king's nobles in the same way. There will be no end of disrespect and discord. For the queen's conduct will become known to all women. So they will despise their husbands and say, King Xerxes commanded Queen Vashti to be brought before him, but she would not come. To this very day, the Persian and Medinian women of nobility who have heard about the queen's conduct will, will respond to all the king's nobles in the same way. There will be no end of disrespect and discord. Something about that, John. I gotta write that down. Uh, all right. <clears throat> therefore, uh, therefore, if it pleases the king, let him issue a royal decree and let it be written in the laws of Persia and Medea, which cannot be repealed, that Vashti is never again to enter the presence of King Xerxes. Also, let the king give her royal position to someone else who is better than she. Uh, then when the king's edict is proclaimed throughout all his vast realm, all the women will respect their husbands from the least to the greatest. I like that. I like that. Yeah, it's something about this woman who went against the king's command. And other women take note of that. One sinner, I think I think the Bible say, uh, one sinner caused, uh, hmm, they say, Lord, give it to me. Something about uh, one sinner caused much destruction or something. Dude. Word. If people don't think like I know a lot of people look at men as leaders and and which God has put a lot of men in charge to do stuff or whatever. Uh, but women too also like word. Women, uh, women, women are strong. God gave them a, 
God gave them some things to do too. And you'll be surprised. You'll be surprised how much who looking at you, like where, and who following your example. And, uh, where, you do want to talk to myself too. That's why, where, you want to, ain't just for men, it's for women too. But you want to lead a good example because people looking at you. And, uh, where, I'm going to get carried away. Okay, it says, uh, therefore, uh, verse 19, therefore, if it please the king, let him issue a royal decree and let it be written in the laws of Persia and Medea, which cannot be repealed, that Vashti is never again to enter the presence of King Xerxes and let, and let the king give her royal position to someone else who is better than she. Then the king's edict is, then when the, king, then when the king's edict is proclaimed throughout all his vast realm, all the women will respect uh, their husbands from the least to the greatest. The king and his nobles were pleased with this advice. So the king, uh, so the king did as uh, it hit me. It just hit me like on TV. You see the TV, how the how the females be doing a be doing a people, and they. If it's okay with one to get get away with certain stuff, well, they they all gonna be doing it. like where you know what I'm talking about. Same thing for same thing for I can do the same example for a dude. You see the dude, see a dude on TV treating women a certain way, and pimping or whatever, getting away with certain stuff. You think the children? We think they gonna do? They gonna want to be do the same thing, get away with it. I'm just saying. They see it on TV happen. They get the idea and where. And it's real though. It ain't just it ain't just TV. It's real. Like, mm -hmm. uh, when the king's edict is proclaimed throughout all the vast realm, all the women will be res will respect their husbands from the least to the greatest. Then the king, the king and his nobles were pleased with the with with this advice. So the king did as a uh, memu can. You butcher my name, bro. <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna get somebody to to sit down with me and teach me these names or whatever. Help me where something. But I'm gonna keep knocking them out best I can. I see y'all when I see y'all. They gonna come to me like, "What's up, bro?" I'm gonna be like, "Who is you?" It's me. It's me who? This the guy. The guy's name you butchered, bro. Man, you know how many names I've been butchered, bro. <laughs> God bless y'all. Uh, so the king did as. Me Mu can propose. He sent dispatches. Uh, he sent dispatches to all parts of the kingdoms, to each province and its and uh, and its own script, and to each people in their own language, proclaiming that every man should be ruler over his house, over his own household, using his native tongue. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> Esther chapter two. Esther chapter two. Esther made queen. Later. Later when Queen uh later when King Later when King uh Xerxes uh Fury had subsided, he remembered Vashti and what she had done and what he had decreed about her. Then the king's personal atten uh, attendants proposed, let a search be made for a beautiful young virgin. Uh let a search be made for a beautiful young virgins for the king. Let the king appoint commissioners in every province of his realm to bring all these beautiful young women into the harem uh, at the citadel of Susa. Let them be placed under the care of he of he guy of uh, he, he, uh, he, he guy, uh, the king's eunuch who was in charge of the women, and let beauty and let beauty treatments be given to them. Are they going on the on the makeover day, like a, like a spa day or something. Uh, then, then, uh, then, then let the young woman who pleases the king be queen instead of Vashti. This advice appealed to the king, and he followed it. Now there was in Chittadil, uh, Ch now there was in Chattadil a Susa, a Jew of the tribe of Benjamin, named uh, Mordecai, son of Jar, the son of Shimi, uh, Shami, uh, Shem, Shemia, uh, Shemia. The son of Kish, who had been who had been carried into exile from Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, among those taken captive were Jehoiachin, king of Judah. Mordecai had a cousin named Had the uh, Hadassah, Hadassah, uh, 
whom he had brought up because she need because whom he had brought up because she had neither father nor mother. This young woman, uh, who was also known as Esther, had a lovely figure. Mm. <laughs> I, you know, the Bible got a nice way of putting it. He's trying to say she's bad, bro. Uh, word. Word. <laughs> uh, this young woman was also known as Esther. Uh, she had a lovely figure and was beautiful. Don't laugh at me. Mordecai had taken her uh, as his own daughter when when her father and mother died. When the king's order and edict had been proclaimed, many young women were brought in to, uh, to the citadel of Susa and put under the care of Hegai. Of Hag, of Hag, Hag, uh, Hagay, Hag, Hagai. Esther also was taken to the king's palace and entrusted to Hagai, who had charge, uh, who had charge of the harem. She pleased him and won his favor. Immediately, he provided her with beautiful jewelry, with, with beautiful treatments and special food. He assigned, uh, he assigned to her seven female attendants, uh, selected from the king's palace, and moved her and her attendants into the best place in the harem. Esther had not, Esther had not revealed her nas nationality and family background because Mordecai had forbid forbidden her to do so. Every day, he walked back and forth near the courtyard of the harem to find out how Esther was and what was happening to her. Um, before a young woman turn, before a young woman's turn came to go into King Xerxes, she had to complete twelve months of beauty treatments uh, prescribed for the woman. Six months with all, with all, uh, six months with all of mirth, and six months with perfume and cosmetics. And this was uh, how she would go to the king. Anything she wanted was given to her to take with her from the harem to the king's palace. In the evening, she would go there and in the morning return to another part of the harem to the care of Shash, Shash, uh, Shashgash, Shashgash, the king's Enoch who was in charge of the concubines. She would not return to the king unless he was pleased with her and summoned her by name. When the turn came for Esther, the young woman Mordecai had adopted, the daughter of his uncle Ab Abihel, to go to the king, she asked for nothing other than what he got the king's eunuch, uh, Enoch, who was in charge of the harem, suggested. And that's the one in favor of everyone who saw her. She was taken to King Xerxes in the royal residence of the 10th month, uh, the month of Tabith. <laughs> In the seventh year of his reign, now the king was attracted to, was attracted to Esther more than any of the other women, and she won his favor and, and approval more than any of the other virgins. So he set a royal crown on so he set a royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. And the king gave a great banquet, Esther's banquet, for all his nobles and officials. He proclaimed a holiday throughout the provinces uh, and and distributed gifts to the royal li liberal. This word. And this, and distributed and distributed gifts with royal liber, liberality, liber liberality. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> don't laugh at me. Mordecai unco uncovers a conspiracy. When the virgins, uh, when the virgins were assembled at a, a second time, Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate. But Esther had kept secret her family background and nationality just as Mordecai had told her to do so, had taught, told her to do. For she continued to follow Mordecai's instructions as she had done when he was bringing her up. During the time, during the time Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate, uh, Big, Big Thana and Teresh, two of the king's officers who guarded the doorway became angry and conspired to assassinate King Xerxes. But Mordecai found out about the plot and told Queen Esther, who in turn reported to the king, uh, who in turn reported to, reported to the king, giving credit to Mordecai. And when the report was investigated and found to be true, the two officials were impaled on poles, and this was recorded in the books of the annals in the presence of the king. <laughs> Some him about that when Esther went to that when when he summoned Esther. I'm sorry, y'all. She ain't asked for nothing. 
to take what anybody else would have took it. The best that they got to take to this dude. She took nothing. <laughs> God take nothing and make a whole lot out of something. Uh, uh, Esther chapter 3. Esther chapter 3. A man's plot to destroy the Jews. Esther chapter 3. After these things, uh, after these events, King Xerxes honored Haman, son of Hamadatha. Uh, King Xerxes honored Haman, son of Hamadatha. The Agate, elevating him and giving him a seat of honor higher than that of all the other nobles. Uh, then higher than that of all the other nobles. All the royal officials at the king's gate knelt down and paid honor to him, man, for the king had commanded this concerning him. But Mordecai would not kneel down or pay him honor. Then the royal officials at the king's at the king's gate questioned Mordecai. Why do you disobey the king's command? Day after day they spoke to him, but he refused to comply. Therefore, they told Haman about it to see whether Mordecai's behavior would be tolerated, for he had told them he was a Jew. Oh, that's why. Uh, yeah, that's why. <laughs> I'm only supposed to bow down to the Lord, bro. I can't bow down to you. I mean, just a dude. I don't care who ordered. Don't the president say bow down to to the governor. Uh, yeah, go ahead with that stuff. <laughs> I respect y'all. <laughs> Y'all cool people. Uh, but nah. There was three young whippersnappers who wouldn't bow down. Tossed them in the fire. <laughs> King Nebuchadnezzar looked up. I thought it was three tossed them in the fire. I see four. Uh, um, when her man saw that Mordecai would not kneel down or pay him honor. All honor, glory, and praise go to my Father in heaven, Lord Jesus, and the sweet Holy Spirit. Uh, when her man saw that Mordecai would not kneel down or pay him on, he was enraged. <laughs> Yet having learned who Mordecai's people were, he scorned the idea of killing only Mordecai. Yet having learned who Mordecai's people were, he scorned the idea of killing only Mordecai. Instead, Haman looked for a very way to destroy all Mordecai's people. The Jews throughout all the, the Jews throughout all the whole kingdom of Xerxes. <laughs> In the twelfth year of King Xerxes, in the first month, the month of Nisan, uh, the pure, that is the lot, was cast in the prescribed, was was cast in the presence of Haman to select a day and month, and the lot fell on the twelfth month, the month of Adar. Then Haman said to King Xerxes, This is a certain people dis dispersed. This is a certain people dispersed among the peoples in all, in all the providences of your kingdom who keep themselves separate. Their customs are different from those of all other peoples, and they do not obey the king's laws. It is not, it, it is not in the king's best inter, uh, interest to tolerate them. If it pleases the king, let a decree be issued to destroy them, and I will give 10,000 talents of silver to the king's administrators for the royal treasury. So the king took his great signet ring from his finger and gave it to Haman, son of Had Hamadi Hamad Medidatha, uh, the Agite, the enemy of the Jews. Keep the money, the king said to Haman, all and do with the people as you please. Then, on the thirteenth day of the first month, the royal secretaries were summoned. They wrote out in the script of each providence and in the language of each people all her man's orders to the king's uh, satraps, the governors, uh, the governors of various providence, and the nobles and and the nobles of the various peoples. These were written in the name of King Xerxes himself and sealed with his own ring. Dispatches were sent by uh, uh, couriers. <laughs> To all, to all the king's providences with the order to destroy, kill, and annihilate all the Jews, young and old, women and children, on a single day, uh, the 13th uh, day of the 12th month, the month of Adar, and to, the, and to plunder their goods, a copy of the text of the edict was to be issued as law in every providence and made known to the people of every nationality so they would be ready for that day. The couriers went out 
spurred on by the king's command, and the edict was issued in the citadel of Susa. The king and her man sat down to drink, but the city of Susa was bewildered. Hmm. I'm going to stop there. Pick up, uh, pick up the Esther chapter 4 tomorrow. I got to remember. I'm about to do a whole episode at the beginning. <laughs> I don't know how that happened to me. Right? But uh, it, it, it happens. As, I'm going to stop there. Pick up the Esther 4 tomorrow. <laughs> God bless y'all, man. And, uh, y'all take y'all time. Well, today is Friday. Uh, man. Get some rest, chill. Whatever y'all like to do. I don't know what y'all like to do. <laughs> right, enjoy yourself. But you don't get step two till you get step one. That's taking God at his word. I, don't, I it's hard, it's hard to explain, but I, I can explain the best way I can. It's, 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 it's always going to be trouble in this world. You can't get away from what Jesus said. Jesus said in John 16, verse 33, in this world you're going to have a whole lot of trouble. Only in me you're going to have peace. And you stay in him by remaining in his word. And um, You feel better. It's, it's something, man, you feel better, bro. I just can't explain like I want to. It's going to be them things that people are going to throw you off. <laughs> But your spirit, your spirit just be uh, refreshed a little bit, man. You feel better. Uh, it's like going to church. Uh, word. Can't explain like I want to, but I'm sure you can feel it, though. God bless y'all, man. Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6. They trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will direct your path. I'm going to keep praying for y'all. Y'all keep praying for me. I'll see y'all tomorrow.